30 years ago, Czechoslovakian citizens took the streets to demand the communist regime to liberalize the country, call for free elections and let other political forces participate. In scarcely a few weeks of November 1989, the Seoul party installed, authorized and supported by the Soviet authorities surrendered. It was a non-violent uprising, the Velvet Revolution, bringing democracy to what is now the Czech and the Slovak republics, who split in 1993 also in a peaceful way. By December, the former dictatorship, now forming democracy, was headed by the intellectual and activist Baklav Havel. 30 years later, both countries are veterans of the European Union and they have important representatives on it. Maros Sefcovic has been an important figure in the Union for many years. The Iron Curtain just didn't fall or in the case of uh, Iron Curtain, was not lifted just by itself. They've been removed uh, by the strong desire of the people, in our case, Czechoslovakia, who wanted to live in a free society. He wanted to rejoin our partners uh, in Western Europe, uh, who wanted to live in a united, free, prosperous uh, Europe on the free continent. That was the decisive factor why the Velvet Revolution was so successful. Nowadays, what keeps protests alive in both countries is not communism, but populism. Last year, huge demos in Slovakia following the murder of journalist Jan Kuciak helped the end of the government of Robert Fischer. In the Czech Republic, President Milos Seman and Prime Minister Andrei Babis are regarded by many as nationalists sparing illiberal agendas. Oscar Valero, Euronews.